Hello, I'm Angela Pfeiffer. As a functional medicine practitioner, I help my patients see the whole picture. Symptoms are simply symptoms, a symptom of a larger issue. Let's take a step back to figure out where these symptoms are coming from and to address the body as a whole. I teach each of my patients the physiology of what is going on in their system, because once they understand this to the degree that they can explain it to their friends and family members, this motivates them to work. They want to work on things because now it makes sense to them. They're able to connect the dots between what is happening between their system and their symptoms. With this in mind, let's talk about thyroid labs. I want to help arm you with the information that you'll need to have to have an in-depth conversation with your doctor about the health of your thyroid. When testing thyroid, the lab results can be confusing. Mainstream medicine and alternative medicine don't see eye to eye with reference ranges, medications, or even diagnosis. Let's first talk about thyroid function. The pituitary gland releases TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, and it does just what the name implies. It stimulates the thyroid gland to produce a hormone called T4. T4 circulates in the body and converts to hormone T3. T3 is the active hormone that is absorbed by all cells and tissues in the body. This works on all cells and tissues. That's why your thyroid is so important. When testing thyroid, doctors often look at TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone levels, first. So earlier you heard me say that the pituitary gland releases TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. So when looking at TSH, we're looking at the function of the brain and not necessarily the function of the thyroid. Your TSH level is then referenced against a standard range. The reference ranges created for labs are unfortunately not that scientific. For TSH, they took a large group of people and tested TSH and created a bell curve with the results. So when you're tested, your results are compared to this bell curve. The reference range is flawed because they didn't delete people that had known thyroid conditions, nor people that had undiagnosed or unknown thyroid issues. The typical lab range using this bell curve will show a range for TSH of 0.5 to 4.5. So if your TSH comes back at 4.2, your doctor is going to say you're within range. But are you? What if you still have symptoms? This is a classic example of mainstream medicine considering you healthy if you're within range and only sick and diagnosable if you've stepped over the reference range by 0.1. Recent studies have been done looking at a new reference range excluding people that had a thyroid issue, which makes sense, doesn't it? These studies offer a much cleaner normal TSH range. So the new TSH range is 0.45 to 2 or 2.5. This is a much narrower range, and this is a range that your TSH should be compared to. To correctly read a TSH range, it's an inverse value. So the larger the value, the higher your number basically, the more hypothyroid you are. And the lower your value or lower your number, often dipping into the negative, the, the more hyperthyroid you are. So if your TSH comes back at 4.4 and you have the classic hypothyroid symptoms, you are currently in a hypothyroid state. Another issue with testing TSH is that it fluctuates a lot. One study showed that it needed to retest TSH 100 times to get an average marker. This doesn't mean that it isn't a useful marker. Simply make sure that this is not an isolated occurrence. If your TSH is off once, this isn't a cue to medicate unless there are very telltale symptoms present. Treat the patient and not the lab. Are there symptoms? Dry skin, thin, brittle hair, insomnia, fatigue, cold, constipation. These are all symptoms of hypothyroid. Now, I had personal experience with this. My routine labs a few years back returned a 7.25 TSH, which would make me very hypothyroid using both allopathic and alternative measures. My doctor was poised with a prescription pad. I had no symptoms. While trying to convince me to medicate, the doctor even said, let's medicate you. You'll have so much more energy. <laughs> if you knew me personally, you would laugh at this. If I had more energy, I would literally spin off the earth. So I requested a second lab to confirm this. The second lab came back at 4.9 TSH. These two labs were taken in a 48 hour period and both in the morning at the exact same time. If I had symptoms and my TSH was 4.9, I would have been open to the conversation to look at this further. Since I didn't have symptoms and I'm otherwise in good health, I simply test this each year and look at these markers with interest. 
I did have my antibodies tested and my antibodies were not present. So I did go a little bit further with it, but I decided not to medicate because I, again, have no symptoms. Treat the patient and not the lab. TSH is one marker to test. So what are the other markers? Remember that TSH is released by the pituitary gland, which stimulates the thyroid to release the hormone T4. T4 converts into T3, and T3 is the active hormone that is absorbed by every cell and tissue in your system. The other thyroid test markers are total T4, total T3, and free T4 and free T3. Now remember that all of these markers are hormones. Hormones are fat soluble and blood is mostly water, so they don't mix that well. In order to be transported in the blood, these hormones need to be bound to a protein. In order for the hormone to enter a cell, it needs to be cleaved from the protein. So once it's cleaved from a protein, it's now free. So total T4 and total T3 tells us how much total bound and unbound T4 and T3 there are in your body. Total T4 is telling you how much thyroid hormone is being produced by the thyroid gland, and this is an important uh, information to have, important data. Over 90% of the hormone produced by the thyroid gland is T4. If you have a normal total T4 and a normal total T3, the problem isn't that the thyroid isn't producing enough hormone, it's an issue with cleaving the bound hormone or using free hormones. If you have a high total T4 and a low total T3, you may also want to look at another thyroid marker called RT3 or reverse T3. So T4 can convert to T3 and at times of stress, whether from everyday life stress, trauma, chronic dieting, environmental toxins, ongoing low-grade infections, or a side effect from certain medications, T4 converts to reverse T3. Reverse T3 sits on the binding sites for T3 and it doesn't allow active T3 or free T3, that hormone, to bind and do its job. Now, if you have low T4, then the thyroid is not producing enough T4. You'll need to look at the specific key nutrients needed to support healthy thyroid function, like iodine, iron status. Assess that you're producing enough stomach acid to convert plant-based iron into the absorbable form of iron. You need adequate amounts of selenium, zinc, and cofactors that you get from vitamins A, C, and E and the amino acid tyrosine. You should also address your gut health. So why gut health? Because around 20% of T4 is converted into T3 in the gut. So yes, everything is related to the gut. Free T3 and free T4 are arguably the most important lab to run because free T3 is the hormone that's available to every cell in your body. It's that active form of the hormone. The majority of allopathic doctors don't run this lab. They look at TSH and total T4 and total T3, and that's it. So another good point to make here is that allopathic docs don't look past this lab because they wouldn't change their intervention. There are two synthetic thyroid medications that are widely used across the board with the idea that they can treat everybody, and this simply is not the case. All right, so the take home message here, please do not go out and start to over supplement with anything that I just listed out. It's important to work closely with a functional medicine practitioner to assess which pathways within the thyroid matrix need to be addressed, and then to work to bring this back into balance with a custom approach that addresses your individual needs. Now I'm gonna leave you with one more recommendation. If you've been diagnosed with a hypothyroid condition, then you must insist on having your thyroid antibodies tested. This is the most common cause of hypothyroid in the United States. Over 90% of hypothyroid diagnosis is due to an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's. Sounds like a scary word and it's not. This is simply the name of the doctor that discovered this. If your body is producing antibodies to your thyroid, this antibody test will come back positive. The therapy for this is often medication and you'll need to address the autoimmune condition, doing everything that you can to reduce inflammation in the body. This includes addressing gut health, removing known food sensitivities and allergies, addressing stress, getting plenty of rest, and leading an active lifestyle. When you ask to have your antibodies tested, you may get some pushback. A patient of mine requested an antibody test and the nurse said, what would you change if that test came back positive? My patient said that she didn't know, and the nurse said exactly, nothing would change, so she didn't do the test. This simply isn't true. First, if you had an autoimmune condition, wouldn't you want to know it? 
wouldn't you want to know that you need to double down and live in a healthy lifestyle and that you need to address inflammation as much as possible? Wouldn't you want to know that just because you have a diagnosis of a hypothyroid and you're given a medication that you may not recover your symptoms because you're not at the same time addressing the autoimmune condition? Wouldn't you want to know that once you have an autoimmune condition, that you have an overactive immune system and that you're more prone to getting a second autoimmune condition? The patient I just mentioned who was denied antibody testing by the nurse was finally tested for antibodies and she did turn out to have Hashimoto's. In fact, her antibody levels were incredibly high. Once this was identified, I put a program in place that addressed both hypothyroid and the autoimmune condition. And she went from 232 pounds to 142 pounds within eight months. As always, knowing the bigger picture is the best approach to treating the body.